Hello, this is a walkthrough video of the first AAT sample assessment for DAFE um, under the new Q2022 drafting and interpreting financial statements. This video is looking at completion of tasks one and two. So you should now be able to see the, um, the first screen. So this is what the new exams look like. We have provided this practice assessment to help you familiarize yourself with our e-assessment environment, which is designed to demonstrate as many of the possible question types you may find in a live assessment. It is not designed to be used on its own to determine whether you are ready. Once you have clicked submit assessment a results page will indicate your overall result and marks achieved against each task position so this is a definite improvement on the old sample assessments where it just told you if you were competent or not you will not be able to go back to review your responses and you will also not be able to review your practice assessment performance your result will not take into account your response to tasks three, four, and seven because these will be human marked in the real thing. So I click on continue. No, I don't. I click on next. And here we are at task number one. So I can see that this um, sample assessment is giving me the prepare the statutory financial statement option for task one and two. Remember tasks one and two will both be based on the same source information and they will either be to prepare a set of financial statements, doing the statement of financial position, the statement of changes in equity and the statement of profit or loss or you will have one where you have to prepare a cash flow statement along with the statement of changes in equity. So coming down, um, part A, so you can see 23 marks, I'm having to draft a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, and I am having to draft a statement of changes in equity. So this bit is five marks, and the statement of profit or loss is 18 marks. Notice, you do not have to use the workings table to achieve full marks. However, any data that you enter into the workings tables will be taken into consideration if you make errors in the main pro forma. So it is worth filling in the workings if you can. It also says show any items that need to be deducted as negative figures using minus signs. Right, and the way the information is gonna be presented is that you have this button at the right here where it says references. And then if I click on tasks one and two, you can see that it's given me a trial balance along with some further information. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to have a look at this further information and on a rough piece of paper, I am going to note down what debit and credit adjustments I need to do because I know that some of these are going to affect task one and some of them are going to affect task two. So first of all, I'm told that inventories are 841,000. Remember too, this information gives me thousands, whereas the trial balance is in thousands. So we need to be careful that we are consistent. So inventories, we actually think of as being 841. So don't need to do anything with that, just need to remember the number. So I might jot that down actually. So I'm putting down on a piece of paper, number one, inventories, eight, four, one. So I've got that on my rough bit of paper that you would have in your exam. Second bullet point, an invoice for 24,000 pounds in respect of marketing costs 
for the period 1st of November to the 31st of January was received on the 5th of February. So I'm looking over here and I'm seeing that I'm doing accounts for the year ended 31st of December. So immediately I know that of these three months, two of them fall in my year, November and December fall in the year to the 31st of December. This invoice wasn't received until after my year end. So therefore I'm gonna to have to accrue two thirds of the 24. So two thirds of 24 is 16. So on my bit of paper, I am noting down, what's it to do with marketing costs and they are a distribution cost, it's even told us that. So I'm writing down debit distribution costs 16 and credit accruals 16. Right, my third bullet point. A salary of £50,000 paid to the manager of the distribution depot has been incorrectly classified as an admin expense. So that means I've got 50 too much in admin and 50 not enough in distribution. So on my piece of paper, I'm just writing down debit distribution 50 and credit admin with 50. So I'm just doing my prep at the moment. Next bullet point down, trade receivables include a debt of 24, which is to be written off. And it tells us that this should be classified as an admin expense. So I'm writing on my piece of paper, debit admin 24, credit trade and other receivables also 24. Next bullet point, the corporation tax balance of 17 in the trial balance. Let's just have a little look at that. So here it is. I've got a credit sitting here of 17. And it tells me that was a result of an overestimate of the tax from the previous year. Right, so if I overestimated last year, it means that my tax charge for this year is going to be a bit smaller. That makes sense because that 17 sitting on the credit side is going to reduce my expenses. I'm then told that my tax for this year is 210. So I'm just going to make a note of that as well on my rough bit of paper. Final adjustment. Land included in property, plant and equipment at a cost of 2300 was revalued to 3000 so i've got a 700 increase in value from the valuation so on my piece of paper i'm writing debit ppe 700 and credit the revaluation reserve with 700 so i've done my planning now at this point it is useful to perhaps just squidge that up a little bit so that I can easier see what I've got here. And whatever I do, I need to be able to still see that trial balance. But notice as I'm moving that across, it's actually keeping the numbers there for me. So I can still see the trial balance clearly. And I've got my bit to complete over here. So let's start with the workings. So revenue. We know that revenue is our sales. So I've got here sales and I've got sales returns. So my revenue working is gonna be that 8754. Subtract the 35. Now notice whenever you press return on these, it takes you back to the beginning up here, which is slightly annoying, but can't be helped. The other thing I've noticed is that there's no actual sort of drop down that seems to appear until you start typing. So I've just clicked in S there and it gives me my choices. It gives me all my choices, not just the things beginning with S. So you can just type in any letter and it will give you your drop down menu. So sales minus sales returns. Cost of sales. So cost of sales, I need my opening inventory 
So inventory is at the 1st of January, 9.40. So let's put that in there. I then want my purchases minus my purchase returns. So 5289 minus 43. And then let me fill this in. So O, I want opening inventories. I want purchases minus purchase returns. And then minus my closing inventory, which I've got on my rough piece of paper from when I went through those workings. Closing inventory should be 841, which is also deducted. distribution cost. So we start with our figure from the trial balance. 738. And then we look and see if we had any adjustments for that. Well, the first thing I had was that accrued advertising, which we worked out with an extra 16. So if I just type in A there, what have I got? Adjustment for marketing costs. And then also affecting distribution was that misclassified um, person's expense. Let's just double check we've done that around the right way. 50,000 paid to a manager. Yeah, so we want to increase our distribution costs by 50. And the option there is misclassified salary. Coming to admin next. So we start with the admin expense figure from the trial balance. 1456. Look at my notes to see if I had any other adjustments to admin. So I had to do that misclassified salary again, this time subtracting it from admin. And then I had an irrecoverable debt to write off. So that will increase my admin expense by 24. And then to tax. So we had this year's tax, which I've made a note is 210. And then we had last year's tax over provision which has to be subtracted, which was for 17, I think, isn't it? I didn't write that down. Is it 17? Yeah, there we go, minus 17 in there. So having completed all those workings, I now go to fill in the answer itself. So let's squidge that right over there now. Oh, that doesn't make that any bigger. Oh, it's a bit wobbly. Right, there we go. So revenue, my working says 8719. Cost of sales, my working says 5345. And I know I've got to subtract that. But I do need to put the minus sign in. You'll be able to check that when you do the exam because you can see it's working out all the subtotals for us. Distribution, my working says 804, so subtract that. Admin expenses, my working says 1430, subtract that. Oh, it's premature making that smaller. Finance costs, we need so our interest paid, so we're going to go minus 64 in there. And then tax, we need our working figure, which is minus 193. My other comprehensive income for the year, of course, is my revaluation. And I've jotted down in my notes that that is 700. So that should be my final answer for the statement of profit or loss. We then come down to the statement of changes in equity. So share capital here, we've got 3240. There was no mention of any shares being issued, so 
that must also be the closing figure, which you can see has been populated. Notice this little cannot write symbol. It's doing all the adding up for me. Revaluation surplus, double check to see if I had one to begin with, which I didn't. And then my revaluation for the year, the 700, gets recorded as part of the total comprehensive income. Dividends, look on the trial balance. Dividends paid, 250. So we're gonna subtract those. Retained earnings, let's find the opening figure on the trial balance, 639. Profit from the total comprehensive income, we go back up here. So remember, it's the profit figure, the 883 that we need, because that plus the 700 gives us that 1583. So the 883 goes in the same row there as the revaluation. And you can see moving across, it's calculated the 1583. And then, oh, I made a mistake. I put the dividends in the wrong the wrong um, column there, whoops. So I delete that and I move them over to where they should be. And you can see that completes the statement of changes in equity. So you get to the end and it, to be able to go on to the next task, you have to click on answer. The response is complete and then it lets you click on to the next task. So this continues from the same data. This time we're doing the statement of financial position as at the 31st of December. Again, we have been given working. So let's start by completing those. So property, plant and equipment. I need to get the trial balance up again. I'm probably a bit too wide. There we go. So property, plant and equipment at cost. Is a figure of 8362. Property, plant, and equipment accumulated depreciation, you see here, is 3716. That needs to be subtracted. And then we had our revaluation, which was adding in an extra 700. Moving to trades and other receivables. We start with the trade receivables figure from the trial balance. Which I can't see. Oh, there it is. 679. Trade and other receivables. So we also need the prepayments figure, which is 81. And then I look back to those notes that I made and I see that I was writing off any recoverable debt. So I need to subtract 24 from that figure. I'm actually not gonna bother typing in the retained earnings. Um, no, I shall I must, mustn't I? Because that's not very good. Not very good demonstration otherwise. But um, something I should have said when we were looking at task one, Personally, I would write down what you have in your statement of changes in equity on your, on your bit of scrap paper, because then you can literally copy it. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm starting with my opening balance. I don't even need to look at the trial balance because I've copied down what I put in to my statement of changes in equity for the retained earnings column. I have my profit for the year, which was the 883. And then I had my dividends, so minus 250. Okay. Trade and other payables. So I start with my trade payables from the trial balance, 641. Um, if I had any accruals on the trial balance, they would need to go in. I haven't got any of those, but I did have an accrual that I made with those adjustments. I, we had that accrued two months worth of advertising. So we've got an extra 16 to go in there. 
Right, so then we come to the statement of financial position. So non-current assets, we want the property, plant and equipment. So we pick up the figure from our working, which is five, three, four, six. Just double check that agrees. Yep. Current assets, we know we should put in order of liquidity. So inventories, trade and other receivables, and then bank and or cash and cash equivalents as it's called. So inventories, I made a note of that closing inventories figure. Remember it's the closing figure we need because the statement of financial position is a snapshot in time at the end of the year. Trade and other receivables we get from our working. So sorry about all this jiggering here. Uh, 736, doesn't like going up and down, does it? Um, right, 736, cash and cash equivalents I need to get from my trial balance. So I've got cash at bank, 56. There's no other mention. So that's going to be going in there. Right, the equity and liability section. So this is why, oh, goodness me, stop. This is why I think it's a great idea to copy down your statement of changes in equity because now I can literally just copy it. So I've got share capital, I've got my revaluation, and I've got my retained earnings. I just copy those figures straight in. So I had 3240 for share capital. I had 700 for the revaluation surplus, and I have got 1272 for my retained earnings. And that agrees to 5212 that I've got in my statement of changes in equity. Non-current liabilities next. So we need our trade and other payables. So I get my figure from the working which is 657. And then, oh, no, made a mistake there. Sorry, that should be in my current liability, shouldn't it? So trade and other payables should have been in there. So non-current liabilities, sorry, should have been the loan. So bank loan. And we get that figure from our trial balance. So 900. So we put that in there. So current liabilities, we need tax as our other current liability. So the tax liability for the year is just this year's tax charge. So 210 goes in there. Um, so... 6979 we've got there, 6979 we've got up there. So I'm happy that my statement has balanced. Click on the answer and then it takes us to the next task.